Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Alat Stapel from WWF. How do you hear me? Well, we hear you loud and clear. How do you hear us? We hear you loud and clear, too. Andre, Don, and Alex, we're not here, but he's on the spaceship. Welcome to the spaceship Rotterdam here in the Netherlands. Uh, we are here gathered with the annual conference 2012 from WWF. Guys, let's hear an applause. <laughs> Andre, last time we met, we, you had your feet firmly on the ground, and we were at the uh, 2012 or 2011 dinner for the 50 years birthday of WWF International in Switzerland, and we had quite a chat, and we talked about all this, and now it's happening, so we are really enthusiastic that you're here. We're discussing here the economy of the future which is a very big topic and you know we really we, we're talking about it a lot but we are here at earth and actually we thought that it would be no better person than you two to give us a global perspective because you're the only two to three people who really have a global perspective at this moment so i'd left asked five colleagues from us here in the uh, in the audience to ask you some questions I will introduce them, and they ask their question, and uh, I hope you have a great response. Shall we begin? Excellent. It's, uh, it's good to hear you, and uh, we look forward to the questions. Okay. Let me start with Alexander Shestakov, or Sasha. He is our Arctic and I leader, and he has the first question. To you, Andre. Andre, добрый день. First, I just like to send best regards from a great supporter of WWF work in Russia, Sergey Krikalev, your colleague. So, as a question, I like to ask you, as a professional space traveler, what do you think? that the space expeditions can do to support research and understanding of consequences of climate change. And specifically, of course, I'm interested for the Arctic. Yes, that's an interesting question. Uh, for us, uh, it's, uh, uh, we, we, we see the, the Earth uh, in, in one moment, so it's, it's hard to, to see differences in climate change, which is uh, going, taking place over a, a longer period. But of course, uh, we have a lot of good satellites, and uh, these satellites are specialized for Earth observation. For example, the polar regions, which we can hardly see from our orbit, but with, with, uh, with for example, uh, ESA satellites like Cryosat, we have a fantastic means to really, for example, measure the thickness of the ice and, and, uh, and observe the changes that are taking place. So we compare these data with, with scientists who take measurements on the ground, and in this way we can really uh, analyze and, 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 and uh, predict also how the, how the ice layer, for example, is changing. So this is something that uh, people uh, have to realize that, the, that Earth observation is a very big uh, big part of, uh, of, of space flight. Everybody looks, of course, uh, at the International Space Station and, uh, and uh, the great work we do up here. But with satellites, we have a really good uh, means to, uh, to see changes on the planet uh, over time. Thank you. 
Uh, the second question will be given to you by Dr. Efrani Francia from Indonesia. Hi, Andre. You visited my place. You were in Borneo, part of Borneo, and we thank you grateful for the ESA donation to the heart of Borneo. My question is, when you fly over, again, Borneo or Himalaya or Amazon, can you observe any difference? You notice something? Please. Yeah, well, one of the, uh, the beautiful things of the, on the planet is, of course, the, the tropical regions. But uh, a side effect is, uh, fortunately, that there's a lot of clouds. So you really can fly over Borneo or the Amazon several times, and the only thing you see is clouds. It's, it's a rainforest, that's why. But uh, now and then, we really have a good view. And then you can indeed see uh, deforestation taking place. You see the, the parts in the, in the, in the rainforest that are, that are being cut on uh, on, uh, on side uh, on side rivers, so that's something uh, that uh, you can observe. Uh, you can see forest fires, the the, the plumes you uh, you can see from the fire uh, from the from the fires. Uh, what you can also see is the effect of uh, deforestation. For example, if there's er erosion, uh, you can see a lot of uh, uh, of earth floating out of the the big rivers uh, uh, into the ocean. Uh, of course, like I said before, uh, it's hard to compare uh, the the, the different differences between my first flight and now, which is in 2008, uh, it was in 2004 and uh, and now. So there, therefore, we have a, a great satellites. But there, there are clear uh, signs of uh, things uh, happening on our uh, on our planet down there. And I hope that our rainforests do not come to the end of their reign. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, the third question will be posed by Mr. Ravi Singh from India. Hello, Andre. It's an honor to speak to you. Do you notice from where you are any changes relating to the Earth as a result of urbanization or desertification? Do you see, for instance, ever any algae blooms in the ocean? that would damage or would have a negative effect on our ecosystems? Well, um, one of the things that uh, uh, is very interesting uh, for, to see from space uh, is the Earth at night. Uh, because uh, it's an amazing amount of lights and cities, so urbanization is really uh, huge. And uh, uh, so at that moment, you can really see that uh, there's not so many uh, uh, places uh, with fertile uh, soil, for example, where uh, people can go. There's a lot of desert, a lot of uh, salt water, ocean, mountains. Um, and. And, and for the rest, uh, there's a lot of uh, urbanization. And, you, and in daytime, you can see, for example, the pollution there. You can see the haze layers over over uh, big cities. So there's uh, a clear uh, indications uh, of uh, of the effects of uh, of humans on the planet and uh, the ongoing uh, urbanization. And um, uh, now, uh, concerning the uh, the the algae, the blooms, uh, I have to uh, have a better look at that. I, I see beautiful colors in the oceans and. And uh, uh, so that's something uh, to look out for in uh, the coming months that I'm still here. I'll try to, uh, to spot those. And um, my colleague uh, has been uh, in space as well before, also for half a year. And he has a good comparison, uh, a better comparison, uh, but concerning the urbanization. Uh, uh, one uh, thing that I've noticed, particularly in South America, is the uh, spread of light city lights at night. Uh, uh, nine years ago when I was on space station and I would take pictures of uh, light, uh, Earth nighttime lights, uh, South America was pretty dark. And now uh, there's been a lot of growth in uh, the South American region uh, over the last uh, nine years. Great, thanks. The next question actually uh, is to do you, Don, so you can hand back the mic to Don. Uh, it comes from Carter, Carter Roberts from the U.S. 
first of all, it's great to see you guys. It's yet another evidence of how bald men have an oversized influence in the universe. I, uh, Don, my question for you is... Uh, <laughs> My, uh, my question for you is, uh, you guys are heroes to our kids. My kids love astronauts. How do you see your work inspiring the next generation to take care of our planet? Uh, I believe that each generation finds its own inspirations, and they pick and choose from all the old fogies that were there before them. And so I will leave the next generation to review the work that we're doing in space today, pick and choose what they find inspiring, and build upon that and, and move off uh, into space in the way that, that they choose. Okay, thanks, Dom. Um, then we go to one of our final questions, and that comes from uh, our host in the Netherlands, and that is Johan van der Fronde. Hi, Dom. Hi, Andre. What a privilege to communicate with you on our anniversary uh, session here at our annual conference. Andre, my question to you uh, would be, this conference uh, has a theme. It's uh, on the economy of the future, green the economy, reversing the trend. What would you, what would be your biggest idea from space? How to bring about a sustainable green economy on planet Earth? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, next week on May 15th, the Living Planet Report it comes out. You've already seen a, a draft of that. And as you know, that's an indicator uh, of the, the, the state uh, of our or, and of the health of our planet. And you're all together now in, uh, in, in one room uh, for a real a big brainstorming session and to think what you can do all together uh, as uh, conservationist, uh, conservationist, as protectionist of the, of the earth. Uh, you are protecting the planet, but uh, WWF has to uh, put in the effort to combine, to combine efforts and strengths of other, uh, uh, of other entities, because you have to think out of the box, beyond what the WWF uh, is doing in its network, because we are all responsible and we all play a role in, uh, in, in finding solutions for protecting, uh, uh, for protecting our uh, beautiful planet. So that means involving businesses and persuade governments. Uh, so yeah, we really have to act now before, well, it will be uh, soon too late if we don't do, uh, do a, a great effort. Now, in June 2012, so coming soon, a lot of nations, but also businesses, uh, civil uh, society representatives, they all come together on uh, the UN Conference on Sustainable Development. So this is 20 years after the, the, the momentous uh, Earth Summit crucial opportunity, because there uh, uh, we take stock on where the world is heading and, and how we like uh, say our future to take shape. Uh, we now, we all have the ability to save our home, to protect our planet, not only for us, and not only because it's good to, to protect it for present time, but it's also uh, for, of course, uh, for the, the future generations. We have solutions. And, and everybody uh, can contribute to that. So it, it, it's, it's making better choices uh, for how to, how to govern places, uh, how to produce, how to consume. All these things are needed. We have to take care uh, of our planet, and it's in our hands. And I wish you all the best with, uh, with brainstorming on this uh, difficult but very important mission. Thanks, Andre. Uh, Andre, we, we, we still have some time for an extra question, so I'd like to, uh, to give the floor once more to uh, uh, Sasha. He has another question for you both. Andre, Don, thanks a lot for your views, and I especially enjoy Flying Panda. So we know that your mission has been extended. 
Are you starting to miss Earth? Well, you have a bit of a look here in the station and uh, it's very technical. It's all machines, it's all metal. And uh, uh, what I miss very much is nature. It, it sounds like a cliche, but if you're up here half a year, it would be so nice to walk uh, in, in the rain uh, and, and or get some nice sunshine here, the birds, etc. Uh, so uh, that's something uh, uh, I, I miss, and I look forward to uh, to, uh, to to uh, to feel and sense nature again. But if somebody would tell me you have to stay another half year, I wouldn't mind either because the planet is fantastic to look at, and uh, I can do that for a while more. Thanks, Andre. We have one more question from Carter. Thanks, Andre. Uh, some of us love to sail on the ocean. And uh, I hear tell that you've got a very cool new boat tracking system on board the ISS, the vessel ID system. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's a very interesting uh, experiment where we uh, uh, exchange da uh, data with uh, with ships all over the all over the world. It's an automatic system, and uh, this is a very interesting. It's a test bed to see uh, how we can uh, can use uh, uh, the, the station uh, to to do this kind of tracking. And so, uh, it, it it for uh, for economy, but for for tracking all these ships, this is a very nice uh, system. And who knows what other applications. Uh, we could uh, uh, we could make out of that. So this is indeed a very nice one. Okay, one last question. Uh, this is for Don. Um, Don, after four months in space, how good are you at identifying a spot on planet Earth just by looking at it? Uh, you're going to have to repeat that. Uh, you were stepped on by other com on station. Uh, could you repeat the question? Sure. Uh, Don, you've been in space for four months now. How good are, are you at uh, looking at a spot on planet Earth and identifying? Uh, you, you get you get good about uh, uh, looking out the window and telling what part of the world you are in. If you look out, you see red dirt. You're either over Australia or you're over Africa. If you look out at night and you see uh, a host of little tiny lights dispersed out in a fog, you know you're over India. And if you see blue-green city lights, you know you're over Japan. So so there are certain characteristics of Earth uh, that show up either at night or daytime that you get used to, and you just glance out the window and you go, oh, yeah, uh, we're over Africa. And Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you all. Thank you, European Space Agency. Station, we are now resuming operational video and audio communications.